So, investigators are saying they've spotted something weird, unlike anything seen before. NASA, known for big discoveries, says this world is interesting because of its size, where it is, and the strange light it gives off. Are we about to find out about hidden stuff that could change how we think about space? Could this mean there's life out there? By checking out what NASA's seeing, we're on our way to figuring out what this whole thing is about. Back in 2007, NASA started the Dawn mission to check out some interesting stuff in our area of space. Dawn, with its three special engines, took a 14-month look at Vesta, the asteroid belt's second biggest thing. It sent back really clear pictures and info, showing Vesta's surface and its history. After Vesta, Dawn moved on to an even more exciting part, studying the Dwarf Planet Ceres. Those special engines helped Dawn leave Vesta and get to Ceres, which normal engines couldn't do. They gave it the power to travel far and stay in orbit around Ceres. Ceres, found in 1801, is the biggest thing in the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. For four years, it was the smallest dwarf planet until 2006. It's about 950 kilometers across and is the biggest, heaviest thing in the belt. Because it's so different, scientists were eager to see detailed pictures of this mysterious place. It had these bright spots all over it, especially in a big crater called AAR. These spots made scientists wonder what was going on. Before dawn, the best pictures of Ceres were blurry ones from the Hubble Space Telescope. We didn't know much about it, so everyone was thrilled about getting good pictures. Dawn's goal was to learn more about the start of our solar system and how water-shaped planets. The bright spots on Ceres might be made of stuff that reflects light well, like salt left over from when water dried up. This could mean there are ice volcanoes, where water or salty liquid erupts instead of hot lava. But what are these lights, really? And what do they tell us about Ceres? Are they proof of stuff happening inside? Or could they mean something even cooler? Ceres is different from other things in the asteroid belt because of its size, weight, what it's made of, and how much water it might have. Most asteroids are rocky, but Ceres is more like a comet, which means it could help us understand the early solar system. After two years in space, Dawn finally got close to Ceres in 2015. This was a big moment because it was about to give us the best view ever of the belt's biggest resident. As Dawn got closer, the pictures got better, showing us a world we'd never seen. Early pictures showed a surface full of craters, telling a story of lots of crashes. But the most noticeable thing were the strange, bright areas in the dark surface. As the pictures got clearer, scientists started guessing what these lights were. Were they icy areas reflecting sunlight, or something else? Some thought they were minerals, while others thought they might be icy volcanoes. Turns out, the brightest spot wasn't just one thing, but a bunch of small, reflective areas. The main idea is that these are salt deposits left behind after water disappeared. This means Ceres might have had, or might still have, ways to bring water or salty stuff to the surface, where it dries up and leaves behind a bright crust. This changed what we thought about Ceres, showing it's more active than we thought. The chance of liquid water under the surface is important when we think about if life could exist elsewhere in our solar system. Ceres is often called a frozen world with a rocky, sponge-like outside. It's different from the rocky and metal asteroids. Its surface is a mix of water, ice, and minerals that contain water, like clay and carbonates. This makes it less dense than other things nearby. This means Ceres might have a lot of water underground. The outside is hard but has holes, with frozen water and other stuff that can evaporate easily, making it more like a comet. It's thought that Ceres has a special inside, a rocky outside and a water-filled, icy center that's almost half its size. Its middle part probably mixes rock with salty water around a thicker center, which might be made of silicates. All this ice supports the idea that there might have been liquid water inside Ceres, especially if the center made heat from radioactive stuff in the past. This makes Ceres special and raises questions about its geological activity and how water changed it. But there's more. Finding clay minerals with ammonia on Ceres suggests it might have started in the colder, outer parts of the solar system and then moved inward. 
Ammonia can make water freeze at a lower point, which could let salty liquids exist closer to the surface. These things about Ceres help us understand not just Ceres, but also how icy things change across the solar system. Ice volcanoes are rare, especially compared to normal volcanoes on Earth. Instead of hot lava, they send out stuff like water, ammonia, or methane, which can be liquid or gas in really cold places. On Ceres, this lets salty mixes come to the surface. When they're exposed to space, the liquid quickly turns into gas, leaving behind bright, salty stains, which are the strange lights we see. The most famous of these is an AAR crater, in an area called Spot 5, which is really bright and changes over time. These changes probably have to do with water evaporating, meaning the ice volcanoes might still be happening or happened recently. Besides Spot 5, Ceres has lots of other bright areas, each with its own things going on. They're not just in one place, but spread across the planet, suggesting ice volcanoes could be common. This means Ceres is still active, which goes against the idea that it's just a frozen rock. As Don kept sending back better pictures, it showed a surface full of craters, each telling a part of Ceres' story. These discoveries change how scientists see Ceres, with its icy outside and signs of stuff moving inside. Ceres is now seen as a place that's changing, not just a leftover piece of space. The bright areas, especially those in AAR Crater, are still interesting. They might mean not only geological forces, but also water under the surface. By studying Ceres inside, surface features, and bright spots, we can learn more about other cold planets. Before dawn, the best pics we had were blurry shots from the Hubble telescope. We didn't know much about this dwarf planet, so everyone was excited about getting some nice, clear photos. Dawn wanted to teach us about the solar system's past and see how water helped shape planets. These bright spots on Ceres might be made of reflective stuff, like salt left behind by water. This suggested that maybe there could be ice volcanoes, where water or salty stuff erupts instead of lava. But what are these spots? What do they tell us about Ceres? Could they be signs of ongoing stuff inside the planet? Or maybe something even wilder? Ceres is different from most asteroids because of its size, weight, what it's made of, and how much water it might have. Regular asteroids are just rocks, but Ceres is more like a comet, so it could tell us about the early solar system. After flying for two years, Dawn finally got to Ceres in early 2015. It was a huge moment because it was about to give us the best look ever at the biggest resident of the asteroid belt. Pictures got sharper and sharper, showing us a world we hadn't seen before. Early photos showed a surface full of craters, telling a story of lots of crashes. The most noticed thing was the weird bright spots in the dark landscape. As the pictures got better, scientists tried to figure out what these shiny spots were. Were they icy areas reflecting sunlight, or something stranger? Maybe minerals or signs of icy volcanoes? Surprisingly, closer inspection showed that the brightest spot wasn't just one thing, but a bunch of shiny areas clustered together. The best guess is that there's salt deposits left after water turned to vapor. This means that Ceres might have had, or still has, ways to get water or salty goop to the surface, where it evaporates and leaves behind crusty salt. This messed with the old ideas about Ceres, making it seem way more active and complicated than anyone thought. The chance of liquid or salty water below the surface is important when thinking about whether life could exist somewhere else in the solar system. Ceres is often described as a frozen world with a rocky, sponge-like outside. It's different from the metal and stone asteroids. Its surface has water, ice, and minerals mixed together, so it's not as dense as other asteroids. This means Ceres might have a lot of water hidden underground. The outside is hard but porous with frozen water and other stuff, more like a comet than an asteroid. People think Ceres has an unusual inside, a rocky shell and a watery, icy middle that makes up almost half of it. Somewhere in there, a mix of rock and salty fluid surrounds a dense center that might be made of silicates. All this ice supports the thought that underground liquid water was there, especially if the core made heat from radioactive decay way back. This unique structure makes Ceres interesting, and it raises big questions about its possibility geological activity and water affected how it turned out. But there's more. 
They found clay with ammonia on the surface, suggesting Ceres might have formed way out in the colder parts of the solar system before moving closer in. Ammonia can lower the freezing point of water, maybe letting salt water exist closer to the surface. Knowing about Ceres' structure and history helps us see how icy things change all over the solar system and also understand much about our big cosmic neighborhood. Ice volcanoes are a weird thing, especially when you compare them to normal volcanoes on Earth. Instead of lava, they shoot out stuff like water, ammonia, or methane, which can be liquid or gas when it's super cold. On Ceres, this helps salty stuff rise to the surface. When it hits space, the liquid turns to gas, sublimation, leaving behind shiny salt stains that look like glowing patches. The most known spot is in Akater Crater, nicknamed Spot 5, because it's super bright and changes over time. People think these changes are linked to water evaporating, suggesting that ice volcanoes might still be happening, or happened recently. Besides Spot 5, Ceres has other shiny spots with different features. They're all over the planet, suggesting that ice volcano happenings could be common. This shows that Ceres is still active, unlike the old idea that it's a frozen, dead rock. As Dawn sent back better and better pictures, it showed us a surface covered in craters, each telling a part of Ceres' story. These discoveries shook up how scientists see this dwarf planet with its icy shell and signs of internal things happening. Ceres is seen as an active world, not just some old space left over. The shiny spots are still a source of wonder. They might point to not just geological forces, but also water under the surface. Looking at Ceres has bigger implications, not just for understanding one small world. By checking its inside, its strange surface, and the shiny deposits, scientists are getting ideas about how other really cold planets change. The things found on Ceres, like ice, minerals with ammonia, and shiny salts, could help us figure out the chemical makeup and surroundings of other similar worlds. Also, finding ice volcanoes opens up cool new paths in planetary science, not just on small things like dwarf planets and frozen moons, but maybe even on planets far, far away. This means places once thought to be empty might actually have interesting natural things happening. Could it mean that far-off planets, considered icy wastelands, might have the right stuff to help support life? In the end, NASA's Dawn mission shows what space checking can achieve. The info it gathered has changed scientific ideas about how our solar system formed and became what it is today. As we keep exploring Ceres and other objects, each discovery helps U.S. figure out how worlds are born and change. Now, the shiny spots on Ceres are a big mystery, but they're just the start. As technology gets better and new missions take off, we're more likely to make even bigger discoveries. Ceres, once a tiny thing in the asteroid belt, is now a symbol of mystery and scientific potential. Its surface, hidden layers, and shiny marks could one day tell us important things about the solar system's early days and what made it what it is. The idea that life, or at least the stuff needed for it, might exist on Ceres is still exciting to scientists and space fans. As we go further into space, the line between what we imagine and what's real is getting thinner. What used to be science fiction, the question of life beyond Earth, is now a serious question to solve. Could tiny life forms be living in series hidden places? Could other icy worlds have places that support life either like us or totally different? These questions will lead the next wave of space exploration and maybe one day solve the biggest mysteries of the universe.